Hey there, in my previous video I told you about my intentions for replacing the SRAM battery. But let's start this video by restoring the power supply unit. To free up the power supply unit from the chassis, you will need to unscrew the screws holding it in place as shown in these locations. Once these screws are gone, you will need to unplug the cable going into all the components to which the power supply unit is supplying to. This might require you to trace all the cables and unplug the necessary ones. You will also have to be a little patient while taking out the power supply unit. Do not yank it out. Go slow and easy, freeing it up step by step by understanding where it is stuck with gentle pulls. I really apologize for the clumsy video of me taking out the power supply unit. But you see, I forgot to unhook the last cable which was feeding the motherboard, so don't you forget that one. Once the power supply unit is out of the chassis, you will need to unscrew all these screws which are holding the Faraday's cage together. Removing the PSU PCB is simple. You will need to remove the four screws that are bounding it to the Faraday's cage. You will also have to remove these clips that are binding the VRMs to the Faraday's cage for their cooling needs. I gave my usual treatment to the PCB and now this looks like brand new. I replaced all the capacitors and also a Xena diode. If you notice this image, you'll find that I have placed the new Xena diode high up in the open space so that it receives better airflow as this little guy heats up like crazy when the system is on. I also cleaned up the fan and greased it. Now putting everything back together, it looks fresh from the factory. Now that the PSU is all set to rock this machine, let's get back to our new SRAM battery replacement. I used a rechargeable coin cell battery with a battery holder and soldered it to the bottom board. The bottom board now looks like this. I took a break after that and thought of replacing the one tiny capacitor on the additional RAM unit. After this, I removed the IO slot shield by removing the screws binding it together in these locations. Once the screws are removed, the IO slot can easily be taken out with a gentle pull. Now it's time to take out the system board. To remove the system board, we need to unscrew and remove the LED unit, like this. Now we remove all the screws which are binding the motherboard to the system chassis.
Once the screws are gone, you will need to push the motherboard Faraday's cage from rear so that the alignment heads shown here are towards the back. Once this is done, gently lift up and pull out the motherboard. There you go. To open the motherboard's Faraday's cage, you will have to remove the screws on the sides and then you can replace the capacitors. I have now reassembled all the components that I have restored, as now it is time for the smoke test. Smoke test simply means that is the system now able to power on without causing any shortages or is there any smoke? <laughs> Here now I have the system hooked up to the XRGB mini and the mains. The video feed from my XRGB mini is going into my LCD TV. Okay, so now it's time. 3, 2, 1. Ah, so far so good. The red light in the power section means so far no shortages on the PSU. Checking around I see no smoke. The battery also looks fine. Now it's time to turn on the system. And we have a green light. Cool. Now the XRGP Mini is syncing to the video signal sent out by the X68000. There you go. If you see this screen then hopefully you have not messed up anything and have successfully restored the main components in your X68000. My system is now asking for a floppy disk to boot from. Everything is working fine and there is no smoke. On hitting reset, I found that the HTPC light is up for a long time, which is pointing towards a hard drive failure. After trying for about a minute, it gives up on the hard drive and asks for a bootable floppy. No worries on the dead drive, as we will be replacing it in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.